Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 12 for chapter 2. In this video, we discuss modeling with first order equations. So we know for first order equations, there is the first derivative of the unknown in the equation. And the general modeling concept is the following. That first derivative is considered as describing the rate of change. If the unknown is the quantity depending on time, that will be the rate of change in time. And if it is a function of space, then it will be the rate of change in space. And there will be um, several different types of models I will cover, and they will be in um, each and separate um, videos. So this is the first one. Okay, so let's begin with the uh, model one. And uh, here is the model that describes the exponential growth or decay. So, okay, so let's say Q is the quantity of unknown that um, we are studying, and it's a function of t, t is time. Assuming now that the rate of change of this Qt is proportional to the quantity Qt. Okay, so how do we translate this sentence into a mathematical equation. Okay, so we see that it says rate of change of Qt. So that is described by the derivative. So dq dt at t is correspond to the equal sign. And then proportional to the quantity Qt, which means it equals to qt times a constant r. Here we denote the constant by r um, because we also later will call this r, that is the rate of growth or rate of decay. In the case where this r is positive, then we will have exponential growth and r will be the rate of growth. On the other hand, if r shall be a negative constant, then the equation describes exponential decay, and then r will be the rate of decay. Okay, so let's summarize the exponential growth and decay model. Is this differential equation? Q prime equals r q, and the initial condition is given. Q zero is q naught. So here we call r the growth rate. Let's say it's growing, r is positive. Okay, let's solve this. This can be solved for any constant r we put there, because we see that this is a separable equation. We can move the q to the left-hand side and have 1 over q, and then move the dt to the right hand side and have r dt and then we integrate. The integral of this gives me ln of q and the integral here gives me rt plus a constant. Then I can take um, exponential on both sides of this and get qt on the left hand side and here we have e to the rt plus c. And now um, there's a little slight abuse of notation I'm doing here. We see that e to the rt plus c simply equals to e to the rt times e to the c, where c is an arbitrary constant. And then e to the c is also an arbitrary constant. So we just write this to be c times e to the rt. Here, probably I should call this c tilde to denote it's a different arbitrary constant from that one, but nevertheless, this is an arbitrary constant. Okay, now we can use the initial condition to find this constant c here. q naught is uh, 
If you put t to be 0, you just get c, and this is q0. So that's exactly what c will be. OK, then we can put this back in and write out our solution. q of t simply equals q0 times e to the rt. So again, this solution holds for any constant r, both positive or negative. Here, um, I would like to introduce two concepts. So first, for the case where r is bigger than 0 and we have exponential growth, for the solution there, we define a concept called the doubling time. We call it capital T sub d. And this is the time such that the quantity doubles itself. So q at td would equal to 2 times q0, which is at t0. OK, so we plug in the equation. q at td is q0 times e to the r evaluated at td. And this shall be 2 times q0. Since q0 is not 0 in this equation, we can cancel the q0. And then we just get e to the r td equal 2, which I wrote here. And now in this equation, we see that um, the only unknown is the td, and we can solve for it. Let's take natural log on both sides, and I will get r td equal ln of 2. And then finally, I can divide both sides by r, and therefore get an expre expression for td which is ln of 2 over r. And uh, this is the time where the quantity will double itself. On the other hand, if r is less than 0, that means it's an exponential decay, we can define the concept called half-life or half-time. They are both commonly used. Let's call it t sub h. This is the time when the quantity reduced to half of its original quantity. OK, so q at th shall be half of q0. Let's plug in the equation. q at th will be q0 times e to the r th. And it shall be half q0. And then again, we get rid of the q0 here, and we get e to the r t sub h is half, which is this one. And then um, I can take natural log on both sides of this equation. I'll get r t sub h is ln of 1 over 2, which is also negative ln of 2. Okay, And then I can find um, um, move the r to the other side, I find the expression for th, which is a negative ln of 2 over r. And this is um, the half time. And now you might be um, feeling a bit uncomfortable with the um, negative sign represented here in the solution of th. But uh, we don't need to be worried about it, do we? Remember the assumption, r is less than 0. So with the negative sign there, we actually have th is positive, because negative sign in front of the r, which is negative, makes it a positive quantity. OK, so um, now we have two formulas, one for the um, doubling time and one for the half-life. I would like to remark on that or call your attention to the fact that Look at the expression for td is ln of 2 over r, and for th is um, negative ln of 2 over r. So we see that they actually do not depend on q0, the original quantity. They only depend on the rate r. So no matter what original quantity you have, the doubling time is the same, or the half-life in the case of decay is the same. OK, so let's take a simple example. 
So let's consider you are um, putting money in some bank account with certain interest rate, let's say 8%. Well, which um, is no longer the case these days. These days is probably 0.01%, but let's assume 8% hypothetically. And we also assume that it's compounded continuously. And uh, we wish to find the time that my deposit will be doubled. So the doubling time. Okay, um, we can use the formula we derived on the previous slide immediately. So here we are given the rate R is 0 0.08, which is positive. And then we know that the doubling time is simply ln of 2 over R, which is 0 0.08. Of course, you can punch this number in the calculator or whatever computing software and find out exactly what is TD, but I'll leave that to you. Okay, let's take a look at um, a case that is uh, a decay. So we know that radioactive material, if we let them stay there, they will decay with a fixed rate. So assuming now I have a radioactive material and I observe that it is reduced to one third of its original quantity after 10 years. And I wish to find its half-life. So recall in the formula for half-life, we need to find the rate of decay. And here the rate of decay is not immediately given. So we need to find that first and then use that. Okay, so let's set up our model. Let Q be the quantity. So the model is dq dt equal to rq, where r is the rate. And here I also know I shall be, r is a negative quantity because it's decay. And right now is unknown. I'm trying to solve and find it. Okay, so given the rate r, given the initial quantity q, we have the solution. It's just exponentially growing on the initial um, quantity q0. So qt is q0 e to the rt. And we wish to use this to find the r um, using this information here. Okay, so the problem says after 10 years, the quantity reduced to one third of the original one. So which means q at 10, if I put in the unit of time is in years, would be a third times Q0. Okay. So what is Q at 10? Well, we have the equation solution here. That's Q0 e to the 10 times R. And that shall be a third of Q0, right? Okay, and then we see that Q0 is common factor. Let's drop it. Then I have E to the 10 R is one third. And if I take natural log on both sides, I would get 10 times R is ln of one third is, is negative ln of three. And then I can move the 10 to the right hand side and find that R is negative ln three over 10. So at least it's confirming our um, expectation of having a negative number. Okay, so we found the rate, and now we will use the rate to find the half-life. Okay, so we can plug that in immediately. Half-life is negative ln2 over r, so I'll put negative ln2 and then inverse of r here, 10 over ln of 3, and that will be 10 times ln2 over ln3. Again, you can punch the numbers in your um, calculator and find out exactly how many years it would take. So here we see that Lm of 2 is less than Lm of 3, so um, it will be some quantity less than 10. Okay, I hope um, that is clear and I hope these examples are useful. and. Uh, Next time, we will look at um, the application of uh, interest rate problems.
Okay, so hope you enjoyed this one and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.